For this project, I chose to look at um, Thomas Nagel's piece on sexual perversion. He discusses where sexual perversion comes from by comparing it to general conditions. Those conditions include the following. Sexual desires or practices that are deemed unnatural. Perversions include the following shoe fetishes, bestiality, and sadism, and are basically natural sexual inclinations. So Nagel goes on to figure out why we find those behaviors unnatural and therefore perverted. Before he does that, he goes on to compare sexual perversion to hunger as to make it easier for us to understand. So he states that someone who likes to eat wood, sand, etc. is more of an unhealthy and odd thing rather than uh, perverted because it lacks the psychological complexity that would consider it perversion. Whereas someone who eats cookbooks with pictures of food, here the situation is closer to a perversion for it has more of a psychological um, reason behind it. This helps us understand the difference of the two habits and how to recognize one as a perversion and the other as merely strange. So now that we understand that there's a difference and what the difference is, he goes on to discuss a process of sexual attraction and interaction. Step one is physical attractiveness, but it goes much deeper than this superficial level. It gets to a psychological level. So, Step two is the perception of oneself as they sense the other. Step three, noticing and being aroused by an unaroused object, which would be the other person who hasn't noticed you quite yet. So step four is the other person notices your arousal and becomes aroused as well. Step five, becoming conscious of your sexuality as you notice the other person sensing your senses. Step six, the other person then becomes conscious of his or her sexuality. And then step seven is like the physical actions that take place after that. So what, where does the sexual perversion of this all come from? So Nagel goes on to explain and list um, a few perversions such as sex with infants, animals, and inanimate objects. Uh, these three things cannot follow the steps given earlier and cannot complete the cycle of sexual attraction and interaction, for they cannot recognize their sexuality or the mere fact that they are being sensed in the first place because inanimate objects aren't real, like they're not alive, they don't have feelings, as far as we understand them. And babies are just not that complex yet with their mindset and brains, and animals are just completely different life forms to begin with. So, um, without this there is no cycle, and the person who desires these things are only aware of their own sexual embodiment, which he says is a form of narcissism, and that is also what... Um, a, a version of sexual perversion. So then he goes on to explain other disorders um, and why are, they're considered sexual perversions. So he just basically explains sadism, which is where the sadist ignores his or her feelings of passion. It requires a lot of control to suppress these feelings that come naturally as you become aware of your sexuality. So he's not following the, like, uh, the mere step of like understanding your sexuality and all your desires. He's becoming um, quite aware of them before uh, it all just happens. So, and then there's masochism, where you cannot find a satisfactory, satisfactory embodiment. So he goes on to say that both of these disorders have to do with stage two of an awareness of yourself and your natural sexual desires, and thus um, they suppress them and don't go through the entire process, which means people look at it as perversions. He then goes on to discuss whether or not homosexuality is a perversion. He doesn't seem to come to a conclusion, but theorizes that it could be considered to be a perversion, uh, not to be a perversion, as long as sexual roles are followed, if this is even important. He doesn't go on to analyze if sexual roles play an important role throughout the process, but he says that if it does, it could be seen as a perversion. He ends that discussion by saying that if it is a perversion, it would be very different from the one he has already analyzed and given steps to follow for. So he concludes his paper with a discussion on whether the sex is good or bad, moral or immoral, but he doesn't seem to reach um, a clear conclusion since he was only trying to analyze where perversions come from and why we view them as such. So through this he seems to say that it's based on your preference and others will judge just as they judge what you wear and what you do 
and it won't stop when they see what your sexual um, desires are. So, yeah.